There was a time when video games were not respected as a form of storytelling and just considered to be small distractions for children, which they kind of were. But thankfully, those days are long gone, and in the modern world, video games are some of the finest entertainment that there is in the world. The graphics and storytelling have evolved to the point where they have become a true art form. And this is simply because of all the time, energy, and money that developers put into making them. I mean, they put 300 million into making the second Spider-Man game, and it really shows. But nonetheless, there will always be good games and bad games. And in the case of this video, there are great games. Specifically, great superhero games, as we are going to take a look at the five best superhero video games that have ever been made to date. Now, before we start, there is one rule to this list, and that is that a game series can only be mentioned once, because some of these series have such good games that they would basically be the whole list, and obviously we want this to be varied. Guardians of the Galaxy This game is actually one that slipped my radar completely. In fact, I did not know that it was being made until it was out. I don't know how I missed the marketing campaign, but I am very glad that I did. I'm not a fan of long waits and building anticipation. I mean, we had that Wolverine trailer a couple of years ago, and we still don't have a Wolverine game. I'm not a fan of that. I would much rather be surprised when something great comes out, and then just enjoy it. And I very much enjoyed this game. Now, its universe is actually separate to the MCU, unless you count multiverses, of course. And not only does it have his own version of the characters, but they all have very different backstories. Well, they're not that different, to be completely frank. Some of the characters are very much the same, but there are some key differences to the movies, and even the comics at that point. Such as the fact that Star-Lord's father is the king of an alien planet, though he's not a celestial being who actually is the planet like he was in the film. You have royal blood. Perhaps it is time for the Prince of Spartax to return and rally his people. You have been to Spartax lately? I have not. But Spartoi technology is well beyond- Spartax was sacked during the war because of its tech. You can't even land there anymore. And in this universe, Drax has already killed Thanos in his quest for vengeance after the mad titan slaughtered his family. Although Drax is still convinced that Thanos is alive, even though literally every other person in the galaxy thinks he killed him. Drax the Destroyer. Huh. The undoing of the mad titan in the flesh. And such flesh. Whether he has or not is not exactly made clear, but I reckon they were saving him for a sequel. A sequel that sadly looks like is not going to happen because this wasn't actually that popular a game. Although, it actually is a very good game. The characters and the universe are similar enough that if you know the films, then you know the game. I mean, Groot, Rocket, Star-Lord, they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, there's differences, but you know what I mean. And you'll definitely enjoy it and enjoy them. Now, the gameplay itself is a third-person shooter for the most part. And you get to make a lot of choices with the story and interactions with characters that actually control events of the game. I mean, older games used to let you do this, but it didn't really change anything. But in this one, you actually get completely different levels that are only accessible depending on your choice. There's a bit where you have to pick between Rocket and Groot, and depending on which one you pick, you will play an entirely different level with a few different cutscenes. So you actually have to play through the game a couple of times in order to actually play the whole game. Which personally I quite enjoyed because I like a bit of difference on the playthrough. And I'm actually not that big a fan of third person shooters on the whole. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's actually a fine way to play a game, but they've gotten a bit generic of late. But this one is actually done extremely well. And the focus is actually on teamwork when you're fighting. Even though you can only actually play as Star-Lord, but during the fights you can call in special moves and attacks from the other Guardians. And it really helps to make the gameplay flow. And perhaps most importantly, this game is just fun to play which a lot of games aren't, to be completely frank, and really, that is all that matters. Yeah, I do love a good story, campaign, graphics, all of that. Of course we do. We all do. But there are some games that are actually kind of rubbish in all the graphics and story department that are absolutely loads of fun to play. But this one has both. The cutscenes and gameplay are engaging and entertaining. It's very well written, and you do get into it. And personally, I would say this is actually the second best game that Marvel has made in recent years. It's definitely better than the first game this studio made, which was The Avengers. And I might get some hate for this, but personally I thought it was just a bit of a button basher and not really that fun, and the moves just weren't really personalised enough to the characters, so I couldn't really get into it. But with this Guardians one, I did, so I would fully recommend playing it. Injustice Excellent style combat gameplay, combined with equally great storytelling. So, naturally, these games have to be included on this list. 
Now, in truth, I'm not that big a fan of the arcade-style games, because, as I said about the third-person one, a lot of people just bash them out without any love. But Neverrealm are a completely different story. Shouldn't you be riding a dolphin? That attitude will cost you, Damien. I'll have my father ride a chair. They are literally leagues beyond everyone else in this genre. They not only include great fighting mechanics and great individual character designs, but they give us a feature-length movie to engross us in the world that they have created. And even if you're not a huge fan of these styles of gameplay, you still have to admit that they are very entertaining stories and they are extremely well animated. I mean, some of these scenes are just absolutely beautiful. Not to mention this series has one of the best tying comic book series I have ever read. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that this is easily the best tie-in comic series that DC has ever made. So good, in fact, it was even adapted into an animated film, and a pretty good film at that. Although really it should have been turned into a full series and adapted the full run of the comics, but hopefully one day that will happen. But anyway, the people who made Injustice made an amazing universe, and that's how it was able to be expanded and fleshed out through comic books and films. And it's not just the comic book, of course. In the game, each character has a unique move set, and they even have their own super move, which is basically just an animated cutscene of coolness. And on top of that, they will have their own arcade ending. And of course, there's some side games that you can play once you finish with the campaign. And really, my only actual complaint about this game is that there wasn't more content and more DLC. I would have loved to have got a second movie in the DLC, just like they do with the Mortal Kombat games now, which are, of course, made by Neverrealm as well. But this game undoubtedly deserves to be on this list, and the only question left is, when are they finally going to make a third game? Because there is no way they're going to let this intellectual property die. I mean, it's far too valuable, and when there's money to be made, they're not throwing it away. So we will get another game at some point, it's just a matter of time. But I do wish they'd hurry up. LEGO Batman Now while it is true that these games are not as mature as the others on this list, you can't deny that they are fun to play. Not to mention, adorable. I love LEGO, and I love the developers making this whole world for us to play in. I mean, it's just so much fun. Now, it is true that the games are very, very samey. I mean, the gameplay doesn't really change much from title to title. Whether it's a superhero game or Indiana Jones, the gameplay is basically just punch everything, destroy everything, and build something. Now, with that being said, the games have actually still grown quite a bit. In fact, the second LEGO Batman game was the first to have original dialogue in its cutscenes. Uh, Batman? Maybe he could help with this. I mean, he's had a lot of experience dealing with Lex Luthor. We don't need him. Well, it seems like just now we needed him. We would have been fine jumping off the roof. I think we would have broken our legs. We've broken our legs before. Yeah, but I didn't like it. And its inclusion of the superpowered metahumans of DC made it a lot of fun to play through. In fact, I remember the first time that I played this, and when Superman turned up and you actually got control of him, I ended up spending the first 10 to 20 minutes just enjoying being able to fly around so easily. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And then when the rest of the Justice League arrived towards the end, and we had all of their power sets, like Green Lantern's giant fist, or the Flash's insane speed, which is incredibly useful for getting around, and really good for building because he builds everything so much faster than everyone else. So basically, it was just amazing to play. And this game series only got better, adding more characters with more unique abilities as it went on. And I've enjoyed playing them all. Though my favourite is probably still LEGO Batman 2, as it's the only LEGO game that I have ever completed to 100%. Of course, we all have our own personal favourites, and it is true that the games only got better as they went along. Now, you could also include the LEGO Marvel games in this, as they are still good and they are all quite similar, like I say. I mean, you know what I'm saying here. They're different, but they are still quite samey. But personally, I actually thought the DC ones were better, and I thought they did have more solid stories for their campaigns. So good, in fact, that they even adapted some of them into feature-length animated films. Though, I did think that the Marvel ones had much better individualization of the characters' moves. Adding things like Hulk's superpower jump as the game series went on, well, that was just amazing or the fact that Wolverine couldn't die thanks to his healing factor. All that happened was, when he became injured, he would just turn into an adamantium skeleton with a head until his powers regrew his flesh. I mean, that is really cool. But to put it simply, although the gameplay is a bit simplistic and samey in places, the LEGO designs are amazing. And there is something just truly wonderful about seeing all these characters made into minifigures and seeing their entire world made of LEGO bricks. 
Not to mention the fact that I love them actually having real superpowers. I mean, it's just so much fun. Pure and simple, these games are fun. And that is really what makes a great game. So, these superhero games are undoubtedly some of the best that have ever been created. Marvel Spider-Man Without a shadow of a doubt, these are the best superhero games being made in modern times. They are easily the top of the genre, so much so that there is literally no competition. I mean, seriously, just, just none at all. When it comes to superhero games, these are the best ones being made, period. Now, at the date of making this video, there are actually three Spider-Man titles out. Although, in truth, the Miles Morales one really is just a gigantic piece of DLC. I mean, a really good piece of DLC, and I have nothing but nice things to say about it, but still, it was kind of like a smaller adventure. And the next game they're actually going to make is going to be similar. It's going to be called Venom, Lethal Protector, and it's set to be out in mid-2025. And I'm actually really looking forward to it. And again, like the Miles Morales one, it's going to be a sort of short adventure that will lead up to the next story in the third chapter. But the thing about these games is, they're just amazing. The character designs and the storytelling are nothing short of fantastic. And the gameplay is engaging and challenging. And it's still fresh and fun after half a dozen playthroughs. And I've actually had a lot more playthroughs than that. And to illustrate my point, when you play a lot of games, getting them to 100% is actually quite a challenge. Not so much because it's difficult, but because you just don't care and it's too boring, and it's usually not worth it. But with these games, I love playing them to completion, and my only complaint is that they are not longer. I mean, they got 300 million to make Spider-Man 2, and it is an amazing game, but my god do I want more content. I cannot wait for the DLC. And perhaps even better than the amazing gameplay is the fact that these games have actually only gotten better as they've gone along, and not a lot of games can do that. I mean, Spider-Man 2 is still set in New York, so much of the map is the same as the first game, just like the Miles Morales one was. But they have greatly expanded how much of New York is in the playable area, and they have made some great additions to the game. The most notable difference being that you can glide, which makes getting around the city not only more fun, but also a lot quicker and easier. Although, to be fair, you're not really gliding, you are flying. I mean, I thought you could fly quite well in the Arkham Knight game, but in this one, you really are flying. In fact, one of the things I just love doing is going through the wind tunnels with the Superman music playing. It's just a lot of fun to watch. Now, of course, you still do web swing around the city, but being able to switch to gliding is incredibly useful in places. And it always annoys me when I go back to the previous games and I can't glide. And one thing I would really love, since the maps are pretty much the same, is if someone who is really good with PC technology would be able to do a mod so that we can combine all of the games into one. Or at the very least, get a mod for the first game so we can glide, because it would make it a lot more interesting. But it's not just the gameplay that's great. That is a large part of any game, don't get me wrong. And the fighting style is a lot of fun, as are the Predator missions. But one of the things that really makes these games stand out is the storytelling. I mean, it is on par, if not better, than any MCU film that you can name. Alright, maybe not some of those bigger Avengers ones, but they are still really good. The characters are flawed and relatable, and the villains have deep emotional connections to the heroes, which not only gives the plot stakes, but it also makes you care about what happens. And I seriously have nothing bad to say about these games. Well, mostly. I mean, it is true that the second game was released without a New Game Plus feature, which is insanely annoying. Of course, this is getting patched on March 7th, so that'll fix that one, but still, it is really annoying it was launched this way. And my second complaint isn't really that big a deal, but I honestly thought that the boss battles in the first game were better than the ones later on. I mean, I remember playing them first time round and I thought they were kind of rushed when they combined with the villains, but they did also have individual ways of beating them and targets and such. Whereas in the second game, you really just kind of punch the bad guy over and over and just keep getting his health bar down. I mean, the first ones were just more creative and quirky, and I kind of like that. But that being said, it is still fun to beat them, and if that's my harshest criticism, well, that really does mean that these games are just 10 out of 10, and I cannot recommend playing them enough. Now, before my top pick, which most of you will already have guessed, of course, because we all know what it's going to be, still, I would like to give a quick honourable mention to the Telltale Batman games. Now, I decided against including them on this list because they're really more movies and not video games, or at the very least, they don't have as much interactive gameplay as the others on this list. Of course, with that being said, the story of these games is very engaging and very entertaining. They are very well written, and I truly love this style of animation. I mean, it looks like a comic book that has come to life, and it is just beautiful. 
So I couldn't live with myself if I didn't at least give this a quick mention, but I haven't technically included it on this list. But still, come on, it's an amazing little bit of game work. The Arkham Games Now we all knew from the beginning that this game series would be at the top of this list. There really is no other game series that could be here. Yeah, the Spider-Man does give it a run for its money, but this one was going to win. And it's not just because the games are fantastically well made, but because these games are really the first superhero games ever made. True, there were many made before it, and some of the Spider-Man ones were actually quite fun to play. But these Batman games are the first real superhero games. I mean, the whole industry changed because of these, and the superhero genre not only changed forever, but the modern superhero genre was born. I mean, if you would look back through the history of games, this really is a changing point. So not only are these games great to play, but they also have a place in history. I mean, they showed the world what a superhero game should be, and instantly became the gold standard that all future superhero games would be judged against. Although one thing I do want to make clear is that I'm only including Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Origins, and Arkham Knight in this list. The Suicide Kill the Justice League game may officially be part of this universe, according to Warner Bros, but in my mind, and in the mind of all true Batman Arkham fans, they are not canon to this universe and are very much separate. And if you don't know why I'm saying that, then you clearly have not played the Suicide Squad game yet. And all I can say about that one is, don't bother. It's really not worth the money. I mean, if you want to play it, then wait for the price to go down, because you're not missing much and you don't want to waste your cash. But getting back to the Arkham series, the reason they work is because they looked at the character and built the game around him. Batman is the world's greatest detective, so they gave him detective mode, so they could show us normal people a glimpse at how amazing Batman's mind is. Yeah, it might be a bit silly going, how does he see all this stuff? But if you were actually in Batman's head, it would look like that, because he's that much of a genius. And Batman always attacks from the shadows with his ninja training, so they gave us the predator mode. And they even gave us a way to disappear into the shadows if we are seen. Now true, swinging between the vantage points makes no sense in real life. I mean, how could they not see the six foot bodybuilder in a bat suit jumping around the place? I mean, it's ridiculous. But the whole point of being able to jump between these vantage points is to show Batman's ninja training and skill level. Obviously the player doesn't have that training, but this is supposed to show us Batman's level of skill and how he could disappear in an instant. So we are basically being him, that's why it's there. I mean, you even have the option to set up preparations for the predator mode, using the environments and gadgets to take out the villains, just like Batman does. The true beauty of this game is that it simulates being the hero, and it does it in a fun way with a great little movie. Unlike lesser games like Suicide Squad, that just throw in the villains, throw them a gun, and say, hey, everyone shoot each other, which does not match the playable characters at all. That's not how they would fight, except maybe Deadshot. And this is actually one of the biggest problems with the industry. A lot of games have been made with superheroes to make them sell, but the actual gameplay is not built around them. They basically come up with some gameplay and then just modded it to look like the hero so it will sell. And that's a serious issue. But with Batman Arkham games, it's the exact opposite. But when you do make a game unique to a character's abilities, like Spider-Man or Batman, or hopefully Wolverine in the future, well, it's just a lot more fun and engaging. You need to become the hero. Whereas a lot of these games were already in design mode and then they said, hey, how can we sell them? Eh, whack some superheroes in there, people will buy that. Even a lot of the original Batman games are just button bashers. And really, you could mod this to be any type of character and it wouldn't really matter because that's how superhero games used to be made. But Rocksteady, who made the Arkham games, were the first ones who said, no, we're not just going to mod existing styles of gameplay, we're going to design new styles to match our hero so that people can become the Batman. And that is what makes these games truly special. To the extent that nearly a decade after they finished their last game, they are still the best ones ever made. Hell, even the graphics still stand up pretty well. Although they have HD'd some of them up, I know, but you know what I mean. And sure, Spider-Man does give them a run for their money, but the Arkham games are still superior, and I cannot wait for them to make another one, or even just give us some new DLC for Arkham Knight. I mean, I would pay through the nose to get some new content and gameplay for that game. They don't even have to make a new one. They can just give us some mods and DLC. We will pay for it. And I know I'm not alone in that thinking. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're standing here saying, we want to buy a game off you. And they're saying, nah, we're not going to make it. We're going to make something else. Well, we don't want that. Meh. I mean, it's dumb. People want it. You've got it. Make it. Sell it. Simple, isn't it? 
<sighs> but anyway, these are just simply the best superhero games ever made. And that's a fact, at least in my opinion. I mean, some of you may disagree with that, and you may want different games on this list, you may want different orders, or you may agree perfectly with what I put here. But in any case, let us know how you feel in the comments, along with which superhero game is your personal favourite, and of course, tell us why. Because we do really want to know. Like always, this is a discussion video, so let's get a discussion going. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.